Hi everyone, Comic Reviewer here, this time doing another Spidey Timber episode review, and this one is on The Hobgoblin Part 1. Now, as you know, yeah, The Hobgoblin Part 1 was the 11th episode of Spider-Man the Animated Series, and this one was meant to include The Hobgoblin first, then The Green Goblin. Now, there was a reason why the Hobgoblin was included, because, yeah, because of the Spider-Man anime series toy line, adding in Green, I mean, Hobgoblin, the writers were kind of forced to have him to kind of put him in, and you can really tell the writers probably had to try and figure out how they were going to do the Hobgoblin, but I think they don't do it too badly. So the premise of the episode is meant to feature how... Norman Osborn hires the Hobgoblin to assassinate Kingpin. And we do kind of see how, yeah, because of Peter saving Kingpin just in time and the assassination attempt going screwy, we kind of see how, yeah, Norman refuses to kind of, kind of, like, cooperate with Hobgoblin's demands. And we do kind of see how, yeah, a Hobgoblin pretty much jumps ship from Norman Osborn to Kingpin, and this is where we're going to see how Kingpin knows about Norman Osborn's betrayal, and it's going to lead to a double-crossing fiasco. And throughout the episode, we do kind of see how Peter moves in with Harry Osborn, and it's kind of clear that, yeah, Harry just kind of wants someone as a roommate to keep him company, and you can tell Peter thinks this is going to be great, without thinking how Aunt May would pretty much feel about it. You can tell Aunt May tries to be happy about it, but you can tell feels a little bit sad deep down. And yeah, we know it's gonna go, it's gonna have Hobgoblin double crossing one side to the next, and seeing things like golden opportunities, despite the fact that it's eventually going to kind of come with a price. And throughout the episode, I think, I think they do a good job with Hobgoblin. I know because of the whole Hobgoblin toy being out, and I know, yeah, the writers have to find a way to kind of add him in. I think they don't do a bad job. I know eventually the Hobgoblin is revealed to be Jason Phillips, and I think Mark Hamill does a good job as Hobgoblin. Again, I think he's different from the Joker, well, Joker, well, Joker is chaotic evil. I think Hobgoblin is more, like, mad evil. And I think there's also a reason when I did write Spider-Man, I would always have Roderick Kingsley as the Hobgoblin. I think the reason I would always kind of use Roderick Kingsley as the original Hobgoblin is to kind of show how, yeah, Norman wants power and control, while Roderick Kingsley, who'll be reimagined as Asian American, would be him thinking that he's doing what he thinks is best for the Asian community in New York and helping to build a new utopia without realizing the effects of his actions and also to kind of make him like a counterpart to Peter showing what Peter would eventually become had he let Uncle Ben and Gwen's deaths affect him more hardly. And yeah, there's a reason why I did work on the Hobgoblin arc to deal with the themes of grief, loss, coming to terms, and having to move on. I think Roderick like Kingsley isn't a bad idea if you use him right. And I think, yeah, it's clear Spider-Man the anime series weren't weren't able to use Green Goblin just yet because, yeah, the Spider-Man toy and, yeah, having to kind of stick with what they were given. But I think the episode's not too bad and I think, yeah, this has happens with a lot of Spider-Man cartoons. There's never going to be a Green Goblin done right and most of it feels like watered-down versions of what we could have had. But I think the episode still deserves... A thumbs up. Still enjoyable, still alright, but still okay. So, Comic Reviewer here, signing out.